I am moved as a normal American that we are here today to celebrate the importance of history. I am thrilled to join you all here in Minnesota and across the country and around the globe for the 500th anniversary of the Gada Renaissance. How remarkable is this celebration? Some 500 years ago, the centuries old Gada system was revised and reinforced by an assembly of representatives five centuries ago and put into practice in 1522. A history we must never forget, but always pass on to every generation. A remembrance of the Oromo nation's commitment to democracy, self-determination, and a just political order. I want to thank the Gada Renaissance International Coordinating Committee and all the volunteers for working tirelessly to organize this anniversary and make it accessible to all tuning in from around the world. Despite not all of us being in the same room together, I am grateful that we can celebrate and honor the significant anniversary and of course, reaffirm our commitment to strengthen the Gada system further. Today, we celebrate one of the most organized and egalitarian systems of governance formed and developed by the Oromo people in Ethiopia. This powerful system regulated the political, social, and religious aspect of the Oromo people's everyday life, including conflict resolution, reparation, and protecting women's rights. It is the epitome of what a people-centered democracy ought to be. Now, as a political organizer and operative, I have tremendous admiration for the principles of the Gada system. Since we don't have all day for me to stand up here, I do want to note two principles that I believe could serve as, a pers as an excellent example of what a democracy must uphold and preserve. One of those principles for me is the peaceful transition of power. Gada just doesn't just ensure a transfer of power takes place only in formality. It takes place after all parties have carefully deliberated and both leaders of the past and current members of the General Assembly are in attendance, signifying unity and the consent to the transfer of power. Now, the most crucial tenet of democracy is acknowledging the peaceful transition of power and the responsibility of leaders to honor the sacred practice, not only because it is necessary for society, but also to maintain and affirm the commitment to only govern through consent by the people. This practice was always a testament to the brilliance of egalitarian democracy and the political advancement of the Oromo nation many centuries ago when the experiment of democracy barely existed. This factor is not only essential to note, but it is an important acknowledgement of why the Oromo nation has long lived in harmony and peace under the governing structure of the Gada democracy. Now on a personal note, um, in 2021, our nation was devastated. We were on the brink of losing our democracy because of the reckless undermining of the peaceful transfer of power by the previous president of the United States. As someone who has long admired that our nation is governed through an ongoing peaceful transfer of power, 2020 and 2021 was a scary year for our democracy. Our republic was in shambles. And if it wasn't for the strength of our and our people's commitment to preserving democracy, we would be in trouble. To not concede after a free and fair election in a democracy is dangerous to the foundation of our systems of governance and invites insurrection and fascism. I am glad that we overcame that very dark period in our nation's history, but it's essential that we always take notes from the past and we actively work to ensure it does not happen again. I use our nation, the US as an example because we must acknowledge that not many other systems embody the peaceful transfer of power like the system developed by the Oromo nation, Gada democracy. 
Gada showed us in practice what an actual peaceful transition looks like for centuries. And it is commendable that the Oromos understood the assignment of democracy before many other nations did. All aspiring democracies today should adopt <laughs> principles enshrined in God. We have much to learn from it, and a tremendous opportunity exists to incorporate it into our local and national governance systems. Many other democracies can also take note, and our scholars, activists, and public servants must introduce it to the rest of the world. We will all be better for it, especially given the current political climate. It is equally vital, though, that we understand and acknowledge that a peaceful transfer of power is not an end, but the means towards achieving a more strengthened democracy that is and serves all, not just the powerful few in our society. Now, the second critical lesson from the Gada system that is most important, the sacred principle within the Gada that embraces dialogue and consensus. The Oromo nation sustained the system for over five centuries because dialogue is the cornerstone of the principle of a system many consider the unwritten constitution of the Oromo nation. Deliberation and respect for opinions are essential tenets. Without this moral value, the system would have collapsed and freedom limited. Without dialogue and consensus, Gada would not have withstood the test of time and survived against the will of the Ethiopian empire's tyrannical successive regimes and rulers. Now, the foundation of the Gada system was always the ability to bring people together, irrespective of their opinion and differences. So long as they agreed on the basic principles of egalitarian democracy and respect for life. As I look back now, the foundation of the Gada was the most unprecedented moment in African history, and to be quite frank, the history of the world. Gada was ahead of its time and a clear statement by one of the most populous nations in the Horn of Africa that the path forward for humanity is through democracy. The foundation of Gada was a moment in history that every member of the Oromo nation should be proud of. But this also means that we bear a collective responsibility to introduce Gada to the rest of the world and to fight for a democracy no matter where we are in the world. I often think about this when honoring my ancestors and never, forget, never forgetting the history of my people, a history of resilience, courage, and self-reliance. And what an honor and a privilege it is for my generation to know that our ancestors' history isn't only that of subjugation and oppression. It's a history of triumph, self-determination, political advancement, and progress. I will never forget that. Even before many nations got the chance, our ancestors established and lived under a system that respected their human dignity and respected life in our planet. And what a privilege and an honor to carry the history of such an enormous and powerful legacy. Now, as an organizer, I operate under a fundamental principle. Always lend my ears, listen first, and speak after the person has stopped sharing their perspective. To engage in dialogue, one must respect and offer space for the others to express their views. This is the principle of Gada. It's the principle of Safu, a way of life for Oromos. We are taught this as children, and it has helped me navigate challenging spaces, both in politics and other areas. Now, regardless of whether we share the same views, our ability to listen first and speak after is how we build a consensus and deliberate, especially on sensitive subjects. To do so is a sign of strength and respect for our principles and how we create the world we all deserve. This guiding principle has always guided my organizing efforts. I take my ancestors and their wisdom with me in implementing this um, the practice every day in my work. Now, while we may feel de defeated in today's political climate and are rightfully angry at the lack of dialogue and consensus worldwide, we must avoid being disillusioned. The Oromo nation must has the Oromo nation has much hope to hold on to, especially in strengthening the values of Gada as an instrument 
to offer a promising future for Oromos and our global human community. This also means that we must accept our responsibility for introducing the Gada system to a broader audience. And we can't rely only on historians and scholars. That's too much of a burden. And speaking on behalf of myself and other Ormo American aspiring public servants, we must take the teachings of Gada and introduce the system to the halls of governments and to the halls of political power. You'll have to forgive me, I did not have coffee today. <laughs> In a world driven by rising fascism, tyranny, and global conflicts, the revitalization, further study, and implementation of the values of the Gada system, especially for fragile democracies and political systems, will serve as a hope for our collective aspiration for our humane system of governance. I, for one, look forward to taking the values and teachings of Gada with me in organizing leadership and public service. Because when you have the responsibility and the honor of carrying the incredible legacy of the Oromo ancestors, you cannot help but take it into the halls of power. I am incredibly honored to be with all of you today. Thank you so much for having me. Long live egalitarian democracy, long live the Gada system, and long live the Oromo nation.